Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, The Media. I'm Andrew. In this channel, I will be sharing with you my stock picks and investment strategies. I like focusing on the fundamentals and will present my thoughts and ideas in plain language. If you like what you hear, consider smashing the like and subscribe button. New to investment? Great. Consider using my link to get free stocks with Webull and Robinhood. Okay, let's get into it. When I when I started to look for information on your company on YouTube three weeks ago, there weren't that many people covering AITX. But now, three weeks later, there are a lot more. And so that was the reason why I think that it's, it's gaining traction. There's something happening. I'll share with you that a couple of things have happened, you know, since I did the debt renegotiation a little over a month ago and, you know, stabilized the dilution and, you know, did those things necessary for us to have the 50, 60 times growth that we've had since, you know, a month and a half ago, right? Um, I've always been connected to the industry, uh, to the investment base, because I've always wanted to have correct information out there, right? Like that's, that's the, the first part of that engagement for me is correct information, shoot down pumps, you know, help people make educated decisions on facts as opposed to falsehoods, right? That's, that's my first thing to protect, do my best to protect the people, so to speak. Um, and it's a lot of work, you know, I'm not gonna, I, I can't, I would never lie, but it's a lot of work. It's, it takes a busy job, my regular job, and it adds burden to it. But it's okay because I have to do that. I feel I have a duty to do that. In the process of doing that, We've created what we call, what I call, the Rad Army, and engaging with folks uh, on the Rad Army, like engaging with folks like yourself who know the business, who like the business, who provide support and encouragement, um, has returned uh, to me, uh, you know, those benefits of, of, of having a, a little bit of a cheerleading squad. And I'll say that it's, it's nice. I really like it. So what started out as, as extra work and continues to be extra work, at least now um, returns some fuel to me to know that we have, you know, really, really good folks out there doing the best they can to do what they need to do for themselves. And we're a part of that. I'll share with you that because of my accessibility, um, I get regular messages from people I think I published one on uh, Instagram, on uh, Twitter a week ago or something like that, where investors, traders, they say to me, hey, you know what? This is my entry point, this is my exit point, this is my holding point, blah, 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 which is interesting to me, but I can never advise on trading. But then they go on to say, hey, you know what? Uh, with the money, with the proceeds, I was able to do this, I was able to do that, or da, 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 da. and it gives me a lot of satisfaction that I'm doing the right thing. And, and so anyway, just wanted to share that. I completely agree with you. I think that's the beauty of organic marketing because it's reciprocal. Uh, the same thing with my channel. I have had people reaching out to me and say, Andrew, thank you so much for making that video. And when that stock was a dollar and 20 cents, I bought it and it's at $8 and 90 something cent. Two weeks later, that's diaper money for my children. The reason why, one of the reasons why I've already mentioned, I just love your organic marketing. To me, it will work. No, I'm not Oracle. I'm not Kathy Wood. So we'll see. <laughs> um, so I, on, on this topic of uh, debt uh, renegotiation, I know that, you know, you are, I guess, legally bound from making comments about market cap projections and market share and all of that. But I get a lot of those questions. So I'm just going to phrase it in a different way. What can, what answer can you meaningfully give? Given your instruct, given your restrictions, yeah, and and it's another question that I get hit with all day long, which is, what do you think you're going to peak on the price per share, and what should your market cap be, and where do you see it, right? And you know, my standard response is, I can't give any advice in trading, I can't give any market projections as far as market cap or price per share. So I respond the same way every single time, and I basically say, listen. There's going to be folks that are going to swing trade, whatever, whatever their trading strategy is. And it's not going to change my path. So for example, we got a, we have a down day, my phone lights up, you know, like, oh my goodness, what's the earth is, earth is 
exploding, right? Or worse, or I get hate mail. You know, like I'm somehow <laughs> controlling the the price. I got lever. Oh, I'm gonna make everybody pay today, right? Like it's, there's no lever around here to do that, right? But anyway, take the hit. The the answer for me is that over these next few years, I'm 100% committed to unlocking as much value in the autonomous remote services concept as I possibly can. That's my job. From that point on, it's the market's job to say, hey. I think this should have a billion dollar market cap. I think this should have a $3 billion market cap, right? I, I would love to be able to share where I think this will be in three to five years. I would love to share where I think we're gonna be forecasted on revenues and profits, right? But I won't because it'll come off as a pump and it'll get misconstrued and people will want returns tomorrow. And I'm not interested in that. It's not my it's not my deal. It's not my job. My job is to build the company. It's industry. It's the market's job to price it however they see fit. Fair answer. Um, I guess let me let me approach this question from a different angle. For me as an investor, I would like to know what your I guess what this year's milestones are and what is the projected sales for twenty twenty one. That's an answer that I would give in a press release. Um, I would just want to share that answer in a publicly accepted sort of environment um, so that, you know, we don't get hit with any selective disclosure type of uh, type of claims from folks who don't necessarily see it or miss that news. So that would be my specific answer. My general answer would be, you know, we have technically an opportunity to be profitable and cash flow positive by the end of this year. And the way the numbers work is it, it might not even be that hard, you know, to do that. And I think that's reasonable and it's fair to share. At the exact same time, I'm going to say, I have no interest in that whatsoever. My interest is keeping the foot on the gas and building this thing and owning this industry that I feel we're creating. And I think there's a lot of models that have been very successful, a lot of model companies that are today, you know, dominating their industries. And I'm really trying to follow in their footsteps, which is build, grow, build, grow, build, grow, 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 own it. And then you're in a position as the incumbent where you've created a, you know, an ATM, so to speak. So, um, I know, I know it's not a direct answer. I'm saying, hey, we're going to be at X million dollars. But, but in the context of what I can say, that's, that's the best I can give you. No, I'll take it. Um, you know, for me, as an investor, I understand the danger of a pump and dump. You know, I understand your reasoning uh, for given, giving the answer that you gave. Um, having said that, now, these are things that are in the press release. So I think that you can answer these two questions. Sure. Um, the... I, I learned through the press releases about the expansion in uh, California, the assembly line, and in Canada. Um, is that in response to the $16 million worth of uh, backlog in order, or are you projecting for growth beyond? Those, uh, those uh, conditional letters of intent uh, or pre-orders or whatever, whatever the classification, or however I worded it, those units are going to be produced out of a Canadian location. Um, and that new Canadian location features this large test track. And uh, I've said in other channels, you know, that uh, we're creating media specific for the industry, specific for Romeo. And, you know, in time, I'll probably do some release of that to the market as well. Um, the California location is where we build our stationary devices. Uh, and uh, that location had to expand. We, we were in very tight cramped quarters. Um, so the, both of these locations are relatively short-term leases. Uh, my plan, uh, sales and revenues permitting is that either in uh, calendar 2022 or calendar 2023, we're going to move into a consolidated, much larger, several acres, several building compound in Michigan, where we can harmonize the stationary production with the mobile device production as well as the test tracks and QC work that has to be done. 
So right now, you know, really due to necessity of how I manage budgets and expenses, we're split. Um, but over time, I, I think that the locations that we're in right now are just a, a stopping point on, on our way to where we really need to be. So this speaks about growth. That's why you're expanding. I went through the website and it says that you guys are hiring more people. Um, how many people are joining your team? Well, Who will you know, be joining your team, I should say? I think I had two start this week, um, which is great. Uh, you know, I, I've hinted, I haven't hinted, I've been explicit that there's another wholly owned subsidiary that I'll be creating and it'll be wholly owned by AITX, of course, with a very specific mission, just like Rad Mobile and Rad Inc. have. And that has to be staffed up. Uh, we have um, an open rec for Rad Inc. right now that we're figuring out how to staff um, for a particular area and a particular kind of expected client that's gonna need a lot of attention. So that's an open rec on Rad Inc. On Rad Mobile, I mean, you know, I had, a, I'll tell you a story. Three, four years ago, I just started, I was working with that first robot and I was in Montreal, which is really like a, a city that's really propelled rad to where we're at um, and my birth city. And uh, a guy, I was introduced to a guy and he pulls up in his McLaren and he had just finished selling massive company and his take was $400 million. You know, like he was a good guy, right? And, I'm going through the pitch and, and so forth. And he's like, he says to me, Steve, I'll give you $3 million right now for 30% of the company, right? And I said, no. Um, but in the course of that conversation, he said to me, you are entirely under-resourced. He said, you need to have buildings full of software developers. And he was right. Uh, so I'm in the process you know, of filling buildings full of software developers. and. Rad Mobile needs more software developers. So we've got an offer out to uh, somebody who's working for a robotic company right now. And I hope uh, we got the verbal from him, I guess, today. So he'll be starting in a few weeks, which will be good. Um, and I think that there's more heads that need to be filled on, on the mobile side, given the roadmap that I have. So, you know, let's say we're probably 30-ish employees-ish right now, plus or minus. I don't really count them that way. By the end of this year, if things go to plan, we should be easily 50, maybe 60. I mean, it's just the growth projection. It's just what we need when we're creating this new technology. You just need bodies, you know, and it actually gives me an opportunity to reinforce to anybody watching this far. And we do gotta, we do gotta wrap this up at some point, but right. um, that, you know, RAD, I, I love reminding people, RAD has designed, developed, engineered, created all of our solutions from A to Z. We control the entire supply chain. I think it's very important uh, when people are considering what our value might be that they know that. So uh, give okay. me an opportunity to share that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I've got, uh, I guess, just a couple more questions. Let me pick because I've had so many prepared, but sure. I wanted to try to be selective. Hey, listen, you know, uh, let's see how this one floats. We can do another one in uh, in a month or something like that. You know, just not... yeah. Um, but I think this might be important. 